In this section of lecture, we're going to look over Freud's psychosexual stages of development. And when we go over these stages, we have to acknowledge two main points here, the erogenous zone and fixation. So an erogenous zone is any area on the body where you can receive sexual gratification. So each one of his stages, he had a certain erogenous zone, and he said that this erogenous zone must be satisfied at just the right level for this particular child. And if it is not satisfied, then the person becomes fixated. If it's over-gratified or under-gratified, then the, the person will become fixated. So an erogenous zone is um, for like the mouth, the anus, the genitals for this particular stage, but there's other erogenous zones. It's any area in the body where we can experience sexual gratification. So let's get started on the first stage. The, so the first stage he called the oral stage. And this is each one of these stages. So there's going to be three main stages in childhood. And each one of them uh, develops one of the different parts of the personality. So from zero to one, the stage is called the oral stage. And at this stage, this particular stage is developing your id. So the child is getting all of its gratification from its mouth. And if he's not gratified uh, with his mouth, then he will, he will develop fixation. And so the oral fixations are that whenever he gets nervous, he may bite his nails, or he may develop, or she, he or she may develop an eating disorder, or uh, smoking is another thing that would be on here, development of pe pessimism, the optimism versus pe pessimism seems to be here. The child comes to its life and it say, are my needs being met? And if its needs are not being met at the first stage in life, then it can become more pessimistic. Also, people learn to control their mouth, according to Freud, at this stage. So those of us who, when we get anxious, we say things and then we say, oh, why did I say that? We see that this would be uh, the id not being controlled. It's funny how when you uh, really like someone, we tend to do crazy things. Uh, we tend to say things that we say, oh, maybe that would, I feel so stupid because our id was kind of taking over. Also, another thing is, is a lot of a lot of us eat when we're bored. We're not really hungry, but we eat when we're bored. And this and eating also is a major source of pleasure for a lot of us. A lot of us don't eat to nourish ourselves. We eat because of the pleasure it brings us. And this would be like demonstrating kind of an oral fixation. Maybe a lot of you have to have something in your mouth all the time. You like to smoke or vape or chew gum or uh, drugs as a way to deal with your anxiety. And this again would come back to your oral fixation. So if your id becomes large, then you tend to have a personality that is more selfish, lack of guilt, and you run on the pleasure principle. So I always tell this story. Uh, I remember that I used to live in a duplex and the the couple down so I lived upstairs with one of my sons and then uh, the couple downstairs they had a little baby and the mom had an emergency and this baby was extremely heavy they definitely overfed the baby the baby had gotten very very fat because they kind of had that belief that if you love your baby you make your baby fat and so they would feed her all the time so one time, uh, she, the mom says, oh, Amy, can you come down and watch the baby? I have to run to the store. It's like a serious emergency. I'm like, sure. So she gives me the baby, and the baby starts to cry. But I think most of you will acknowledge that the baby was crying because um, the mom was leaving, and I'm a stranger. So the mom rushes and grabs the bottle and th gives it to the baby. And I'm kind of like, oh psychology nightmare but whatever you don't say anything to another mom okay that's just number one rule of motherhood 
So she shoves the baby, the bottle in the baby's mouth to show, hey, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling scared, just just eat some food. And a lot of us do that. I, d- I did it with my children, like when they um, went to the doctors and they got a shot, we'd go and we'd get ice cream afterwards. Or in order to celebrate a big accomplishment, a lot of times we would get ice cream or cake or to show them that I love them, I would give them candy or something. We do that, but when you look at it from this particular theory, we say, oh my gosh, we can see how we're rewarding everything, we're giving pleasure to the mouth. So anyway, we've got the baby, I play with the baby, we walk around, the baby calms down, she's fine, she's fine. Then the mom comes back and I set the baby down on the couch. So this baby is eight months old, the baby can't walk yet. And the mom goes to walk me to the door. The baby um, starts to cry because she thinks that the mom is leaving again. And the mom grabs the bottle and shoves it in the baby's mouth. Now, I guess I had a little bit of a lack of a filter here. I must be orally fixated. And I, instead of just keeping it to myself, I said, Oh, maybe she just wants to be held. She's scared that you're leaving. And um, the mom said, Oh, no. We don't spoil the baby that way. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll see you later. But do you see how when the baby wanted love and care, the baby was just given food? And uh, maybe we do that to ourselves. Maybe we eat when we're very emotional. So hopefully this has given you an idea about how an oral fixation could develop is when the baby cries or when the baby needs stimulation we put something in the baby's mouth instead of trying to entertain the baby now trying to entertain the baby is not possible at all times so we understand why there's pacifiers we understand why people do this and do I know for a fact that oh if you give a baby a pacifier that the baby's gonna grow up to become orally fixated with uh, smoking or one of these things no I don't that's the thing with his theory is it's an interesting theory but you can't really prove if it's right or if it's wrong Um, because if the baby sucked on a pacifier until they were four years old and they grow up and they have no oral addictions, then Freud would probably say, oh, okay, well, if they didn't get fixated, they must have had just the right amount. Or if the baby never sucked on the pacifier, then he could go back and say, oh, well, that's because they didn't suck on the pacifier, and so they were undergratified. So it's an interesting theory that we've got going on here. But can it be proven that this causes that? I don't think so. I think when you guys are raising your children, you just do the best that you can do, and and that's all there is. And, you know, let's go to the next one. Okay. So I remember when my teacher taught me this, and I remember sitting in the classroom being, like, shocked. Like, really? Oh, my goodness. So at this stage, Freud says, this is from uh, 1 to 3, Freud says that he, that the child gets all of his gratification from its anus. I remember sitting in the room going, what? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But now I understand it better and I've raised my own children, so I I get it. I get it. So I'll try to share this all with you. So starting now, when you potty train your child is you should, you'll be able to tell when to potty train the child by watching them and seeing when they seem to be in control of it. So every child is different. They get a different, there's a different time period when they control their anal sphincter. So the nervous system doesn't get mature enough for their mind to control the anal sphincter, the closing, opening and closing of the anus until a certain point. But once they get to that point and they're starting to recognize, oh, I'm urinating, oh, I'm defecating, at that point, that's when you should kind of start the potty training. And so let's see what he says about this. Is This is something interesting that maybe some of you have not considered. I don't think I considered it before studying this. Is he says that potty training is the first developmental task that the parents are demanding of the children. See, we can 
feed them, we can bathe them, we can clothe them. But when we go to potty train them, that is when we are saying, we need you to do this because this is what we do in this society. And since it's the first one, this is what's developing the child's ego, how the child goes through this stage of potty training. So remember that fixation. So the erogenous zone here is the anus. But remember the fixation concept? Well, the fixation here is if the child gets stuck in this stage, they can have one of two personalities. So the first personality is anal retentive. So if someone ever says to you, dude, you're so anal, or hey, God, you're anal, they're not calling you an asshole. What they're saying is, is they're saying you're like this. You tend to be controlling, neat, organized, uptight, and rigid stingy. Now let's see why Freud would say that this develops here. If the child is potty trained too early before their mind can control their sphincter, I want you to picture that this is what it'll be like. The child goes poop in their pants, but it might feel squishy back there, but they did not actually feel themselves pushed out. It was just kind of something that just kind of happened. So the child doesn't really know that they're in control. But then the mommy comes and sees it and says, oh, dirty, 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 nasty, nasty. I thought you were a big boy. I thought you were could do this. This is bad, bad, bad. So the child, not knowing what it did, is hears that it's dirty. So they become obsessed with being neat. I want to please mom. I want her to be happy. I'm going to try to control something that I have no control over. I'm going to put attention to organize. I'm uptight because I don't understand why mom is saying this to me. I don't know why she's saying it. it's coming out of nowhere. So I become very uptight and anxious. And then I try to keep things in line the only way that I can. And I become rigid. I become stingy. I hold on to things. So Freud says that children that are potty trained too early develop these characteristics, stingy, controlling, neat, organized, uptight, and rigid, as a, be, due to the fact that they were admonished for something that they had no control over. And it was the first time when they were receiving this type of information. So this is kind of what imprinted on their personality. Now, the opposite would be anal expulsive. So if a child is in fully full control of their bowels and their urination, and they get very comfortable with just defecating and urinating in their diapers, then Freud would say that this will develop into this type of personality, the anal expulsive, where they're very laid back, they're lazy, they're messy, they're disorganized, and they're undisciplined because they just got used to it. So I'm okay with the mess. Why is a lot of pressure? Why should I put a lot of pressure on myself? Everything's okay. We don't have to be uptight. I'm, I'm not, you know, an undisciplined. So probably a lot of you feel like in the middle, you probably feel like you have a little bit of this and maybe a little bit of that. Um, and that's what he says is like, uh, a normal, a healthy personality. If you're too much this way, then you're going to alienate people. People aren't going to like you. They're going to be pushed away from you. If you're too much like this, then it's going to be the same as people are not going to be able to deal with you. And you probably won't be able to hold down a job either here. You probably won't be able to hold down a job too controlling or just not going to be well liked and we're going to find out that Freud says the hallmark of a healthy personality is the ability to work and the ability to love and so being extremely here or here would create difficulties in both of those areas now um, I've raised five boys and each one of them was potty trained at a different time and it just seemed to have to do with their personality. I will say that I had one that was uh, that was potty trained very late. Uh, he did not fully get potty trained until about four. Now other ones got potty trained uh, at a year and a half. And so your question to me as a mother of five would probably be like, well, um, 
So the one that it got potty trained so late, is he anal expulsive? And what I'm going to say is, is he's just like most of us. He is a bit um, messy and disorganized. But he is in no way, shape, or form undisciplined. He's extremely disciplined. Um, he makes lists every day of what he's going to do, and he works really, really hard. And he has his own scheme of organization. And he is somewhat controlling about everything that he does. So I think what was going on with Freud is I think it's a great interesting concept but let's look at it from a different point of view what type of parents would potty train too early probably the anal retentive right they would want their children potty trained right on time because they're controlling and they're obsessed with neatness and uptight and rigid and then what type of parents would potty train too late probably these type like oh well, he'll get potty trained by the time he's in college or, you know, we don't really need to put a lot of pressure on them. And so maybe what he was seeing with this potty training was more the characteristics of the parents. Maybe there was some genetics involved there is the parents wanted to potty train early and then the genetic kind of traits were he said that they were due to potty training but maybe they were just genetic. So again, we can't prove his theory. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because when you have children, um, I don't want you to get too caught up in this theory and like make a big deal about potty training. I think the underlying principle for raising children should be just love them, just accept them as they are and just do your best with them. And take into consideration what I told you is when they when you see that they're able to control it then you should try to pressure them the one that was four that didn't get potty trained um, until around four is he developed some kind of anxiety around the toilet he would get really really nervous I could see his little heart would pound and I said you know I'm not gonna make him crazy with this you know he'll get potty trained so um, I do definitely tend to lean on this anal expulsive, but I'm very similar to him. I, I feel like I tend to be laid back, but I can be controlling about certain things. I, a little bit disorganized, messy, but I'm extremely disciplined, extremely disciplined, and I have my own organization. So he and I are a lot alike. A, a lot of my sons are a lot like me. They have their own characteristics, but I don't think the way that I potty trained them really created their personality their ego here it's a great theory interesting theory um i'm glad to share it with you but i hope that you won't take potty training extremely seriously and just enjoy your children